Watching this episode of Boogie Pop made me realize I'm too stupid to review Boogie Pop. <laughs> Greetings, my friends. It's time to dive into another wild and crazy and super incomprehensible episode of Boogie Pop. You guys ever watch a series that just completely leaves you befuddled with nothing to say and almost no way of explaining everything that you just watched? That's kind of the feeling that I get from watching Boogie Pop. It's the type of series that's not going to hold your hand and it's not going to give you any definitive answers. It's the type of show that you kind of just have to take it for what it is, enjoy it at your very own leisure, and eventually either everything will be revealed or it'll be up to the interpretation of the viewer. What's going on here is we have a brand new storyline, which is starting in the middle of nowhere, and I'm kind of surprised by that as I felt there was maybe a little more ground to cover from the first major story arc of the series. But no, we jump right into this one with tons of new characters, no explanation as to who they are, you just have to accept the wacky adventure that they're going on. So, the first half of the series was all about some weird alien creature who had been cloned, and then there was this chick with a split personality with crazy superpowers. Now we're moving on to something entirely different. There is this being which goes by the name of the Imaginator, and the Imaginator is kind of like the arch nemesis of Boogie Pop, an antithesis to that character, if you will, and the Imaginator is going to be challenging Boogie Pop, and it's going to be doing this by preying on this young teacher who has the ability to see inside the souls of people. That's already confusing enough as is, but like, like I said, a lot of this is truly going to be up for interpretation. It looks like the main new character of this arc is going to be this school teacher who is also something of a counselor, something that he does begrudgingly for his students, mostly because he himself even believes he's not fully qualified to do this, but he does have the unique skill to be able to look into the very soul of people, and he always sees the same thing a rose. However, with every single person, there's always something missing. Maybe it's the leaves, maybe it's the stems, maybe it's the actual bud itself. And he realizes that pretty much there's no perfect person in this world. Everyone is always lacking something. And of course, this is going to tie into the overall story here, which again, mostly makes no fucking sense. So while this teacher is burdened with this unique ability and something that he's come to terms with, it's something that's going to have a massive effect on his life when he ends up running into the imagination and this overall image is just really creepy and awesome of this young Japanese girl who's just sort of like floating in mid-air, being able to quite literally walk on the air like it's a set of stairs. And throughout the entire episode, she's constantly goading him and possessing his friends and people that he associates with to do something. See, it's moments like this where I just really don't know what to say because what the fuck is even going on here? There's this one scene where he's just walking randomly past this parking garage when he's suddenly attacked by this woman, and it turns out that this woman apparently was one of his fellow students, someone who came to him for counseling, and he was not able to save her. The entire scene is highly reminiscent of the opening of The Sixth Sense, except there's just something completely different in the supernatural realm actually going on here. You get to see that the Imaginator actually ends up sort of possessing this woman and then ends up forcing her to kill herself by slitting her very own throat. And he does this as sort of a, a means to challenge the actual teacher for, again, some sort of reason. This seems to awaken some sort of unique ability in him to suddenly make people freeze and he suddenly transforms into some sort of vigilante going down alleyways and beating up bullies. Again, I don't know why. Oh, and in case you weren't confused enough as is at the very end of the episode, they're like, hey, here's another brand new character that maybe we've seen in the background, but now they're taking a full part in the story. It's this Japanese girl who's getting ready to commit suicide by jumping off the side of the building until Boogie Pop shows up and says, mm, nah, you're not going to do that. You don't have the balls to do it. And she even goes as far as to reveal that she was the one who killed her friend. And uh, like I said, everything here just doesn't really make any sense. But as, even though it doesn't make any sense for me, and I honestly can't sort of, like, explain it in a clear way, I'm really sucked into the story, and I can't quite figure out why. Maybe it's my drive to actually want to see what truly is going on in this story. Maybe it's just waiting for that moment where that last little puzzle piece is going to fall in, and I'm going to go, ah... But I have a feeling that's not going to happen and it's not going to be so easy. This is the type of show that begs rewatching, if only to see all of the subtleties and hidden messages that it's trying to give us. And for that, I do actually want to applaud it. It's making me think. It's an intellectual type of anime. Either that or it's just completely up its own ass. So what's the rundown on this episode of Boogie Pop? Really, I 
can't make it any clearer than that. I, I, I am a loss for words, to be honest, with this episode right here. Like I said, I really like what they're kind of doing with the storytelling, though, here. It, it still manages to engross me and get me really sucked in to see what's truly going to happen to these characters and how they're going to deal with all these supernatural elements, the possible end of this world, and the fact that there are all these weird, mysterious phantoms and reapers just sort of running around. Sometimes it's hard to tell who's the good guy, who's the bad guy, but again, I kind of like that. Not everything's completely black and white and they're not just going to be spoon-feeding the viewer the answer the entire time. I really think this is going to go down as one of those big cult classic kind of animes that everybody's going to have their very own interpretation for, and I'd really love to get all of your thoughts on that. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and just give this episode right here a 4 out of 5. I am knocking it down if only for the fact that it is kind of incomprehensible, but it's the type of incomprehensible that I can get behind. I'm very excited to see where the rest of this story is going to be going, and uh, if anything, it's just a super fun atmosphere type of show to watch. You know what guys, let's just keep this confusion train going. Let's talk about another episode of Boogie Pop, an episode which was honestly just as confusing as the last, but it's starting to finally fall into place a little bit, at least with this current arc right here. I can't like fully explain like on paper truly what the entire series is all about, but this episode right here was a great case study of how interesting characters can make something even nonsensical really fun to watch. And of course, I think one of the best things about Boogie Pop is how it's constantly sort of like jumping around from time to time and showing you all of these different scenarios from other characters' perspectives. And this is the episode that finally started to make me really enjoy that. But there's also a ton of things going on in this episode. There are the introduction of brand new characters as well, and they even take a lot of time to actually flesh them out. So... Let's just go ahead and jump right in. This main story actually ends up taking from the perspective of those two people who are about to be beaten up by those bullies who was saved by the teacher in the last episode. This is young Masaki, who just so happens to be the brother of Kari Minagi, the would-be superhero of the series, and he was saving this girl who just sort of came out of nowhere and quite literally offered her body to these bullies in order to leave this kid alone. And she comes across as very cold and robotic. I believe her name is Orihata. And eventually she starts forming a relationship with young Masaki, and they basically end up becoming boyfriend and girlfriend. However, these two characters could not be more different from one another. And it's at this point of the episode where the entire tone sort of shifted. It sort of transformed into sort of like just a run-of-the-mill dating anime series of this young girl girl and this super excited kid. Basically, he was just excited to finally be able to make a connection with someone, to have love at very first sight. The thing is, throughout the course of the entire episode, Orihata comes across as very cold and uncaring and almost robotic. And at first, I thought that there was some sort of really messed up reason for that. Probably a lot of that had to do with her family life, of which she brings up that she has no mother or father. And it isn't until literally the final scene of the episode where all of this just manages to fall into place. So the first half of the episode is just building up the relationship between these two kids, which is well and good, but overall, what does it have to do with anything? Now, we get to learn that the reason that these bullies were actually attacking this kid in the first place is because of another new character who's introduced in this episode who goes by the name of Shinyo. And he is an interesting character, to say the least, because he actually also has feelings for Masaki. Yes, that's actually what's going on here to the point where he's even okay with his friends sort of beating it up if it means he can get even a little closer to this character. And he's, of course, very disgusted by the fact that he's in love with this girl who has a reputation for... Well, let's just use the word loose. So it looks like he's planning something kind of evil and malicious trying to get his girlfriend out of the way, and when he's actually stalking her outside of her window, he's suddenly attacked by this big, creepy, biker-looking dude with pitch-black eyes, who again is another supernatural character in the series who ends up grabbing him and electrocuting his face, and then transforming him into his very own personal robotic entity. He calls him a terminal, a terminal for the Toa organization. This is the evil, mysterious organization that's been in the series, the one that actually uh, cloned Echoes and made the uh, Maneater, so I'm guessing that's actually what's going on here. We get to see various different forms of the Maneater, or at least different members of its species, which actually take on the form of a human. And basically, he's going to use his kid to uh, sort of, like, do his very own evil deeds. He, he literally is able to control him and give him orders, and if he ever goes against these, well, he's going to be in trouble. 
This instills a massive change in this character to the point where a lot of people are actually starting to notice it, and eventually he is confronted by the mysterious teacher who's been gifted with the powers from the Imaginator, and he's able to sort of free him from this state, allowing him to be a regular person yet again. However, this ends up drawing the attention of that weird freaky biker again who ends up trying to kill him when suddenly he's attacked by Boogie Pop and her razor wire. All of that stuff is thrilling and good, but really it, it sort of culminates in the final scene of the episode where he tries to toss this kid off of a roof who is eventually saved by Boogie Pop and he makes a quick escape. At the very end of the episode, we uh, cut back to this earlier scene in the episode where Masaki is calling Orihata and he wants to meet her in the park for a celebration with her getting into her favorite school. She goes to the park and when she gets there, Masaki doesn't arrive, but that creepy biker does. And the implication here is that he is also controlling her and that she is just another one of his terminals, just like that other character in the series. And it's just weird that every single character who seems to be in love with Masaki has been transformed into some sort of weird robotic zombie. Why? For what purpose? Who the fuck knows? So what's the rundown on this episode of Boogie Pop? Just talking about this episode makes my head hurt. The entire series in general, this is a very hard show to review as it's really not going to be giving any answers anytime soon. And even still, I'm not quite sure where the entire concept of this series is going or really who I should be rooting for in a lot of these situations. I mean, Boogie Pop comes across as a hero character, but really there's not really any sort of evidence as to where this entity came from and what its ultimate goal is aside from fighting the Imaginator four reasons. The Toa organization is also very evil, very much like Umbrella from Resident Evil. At the beginning of the story, we probably aren't going to learn about them, but they probably have a very strong presence in this world, and I like that because it's adding this not only supernatural, but also sci-fi element to the series. I really, that, that's all I can really say about this episode. It's just completely confounded me with how incredibly strange it is. But it still manages to be incredibly atmospheric and it sucks me in with its amazingly well done characters who, like, I, I just think this series does a great job of introducing a character quick and getting to make the viewer care about them very quickly. And, and that's a really hard thing to actually do. And they do a lot of it overall with just the visuals and the atmosphere, not that much dialogue. Uh, this is definitely a series that I think is worth checking out if only to see how it's eventually all going to play out. As for now though, it's just complete and utter confusion, but it's really fun to watch and I can't wait to see how it's going to unfold. It's kind of like trying to decipher a puzzle. And I'm going to give this episode a 4 out of 5. I really want to hear from all of you guys though. That's basically the reason I'm reviewing Boogie Pop at this point. It's to kind of hear from you guys to get your thoughts, your interpretations behind the actual story. And I'd love to hear about all of them in the comment section below. Let's get a discussion going. Thank you all for watching this review. I'll see you all next time. And as always, stay down there, baby.